thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, your show host and executive producer. This is a series all about evangelism and discipleship, and we're highlighting ministries all around the world that are doing just that. Our next story comes out of Cyprus. It's Middle East Reform Fellowship, known as MRF, and with me is the founder, Victor Atala. Victor, thank you so much for spending some time with our audience. Thank you. Yeah. So I understand Lisa, your wife, and you founded this ministry a while ago. So tell our viewers about how God put that on your heart to do that. Well, we came to the point of seeing there is a need for the gospel in Arab and Muslim lands. As these lands closed for missionaries, and then we realized the pioneer missionaries were faithful and they were visionary. And so they trained local people, they established churches. And so the Lord gave us the vision of working with national churches and the local people know the language. They do not need to adjust to the culture. They don't need a work permit mm -hmm. like missionaries right. or a visa like missionaries. Right. And they cost very little compared right. to uh, ex uh, foreign missionaries. Right. Right. And so we decided to establish something based on training nationals and yeah. working through nationals. Yeah, it saves a lot of time. They already know the language, they know the culture, and like the man of peace, he already has influence, he has relationships in the community. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's good. So uh, how long ago, what year did you guys start the ministry and uh, what was it like getting going? Well, Murph has roots all the way back to 1970. Wow. But the present organization was organized mm -hmm. and registered in the Republic of Cyprus mm -hmm. in 1984. Mm -hmm. Good. That's good. So they say teamwork makes the dream work. Tell us a little bit about the team and maybe some of the areas generally that you're working in. We are very thankful that uh, we started uh, very much with Arabic broadcasting mm -hmm. and then uh, training uh, people to do Arabic broadcast broadcasting, mm -hmm. to produce Arabic literature, to do evangelism in villages and in towns in mm -hmm. Uh, different countries in the Middle East. Right. So it was very much uh, in the beginning focused on Arabic. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord blessed and opened up other lands uh, like in East Africa, uh, mm -hmm. in Iran, uh, all the way to Indonesia mm -hmm. and Pakistan as well. Yeah, that's good. So if I were to ask you, how would you describe the vision or the mission or the heartbeat of Murph? Well, Murph is rooted in a fourfold approach to missions and the fourfold are interconnected mm -hmm. interdependent mm -hmm. the backbone of murph ministries is biblical training mm -hmm. training the workers mm -hmm. who are qualified to do the work locally and they are able mm -hmm. to do that in their own language mm -hmm. uh, without needing visas or uh, pressures from governments right. And so biblical training prepares evangelists, which leads to the ch extension of the church. Mm -hmm. And then, as you know, when uh, people who are not of Christian background, mm -hmm. particularly if they are Muslims mm -hmm. and they become Christians, right. then you must take care of them right. in a way that does not make them dependent right. on the aid you provide, right. but rather it makes them uh, productive yep. and helpful to others, and yep. we call that diaconal aid. Nice. MRF is not a relief organization. Right. Our focus is on the ministry of the Word. Right, training them up. It's like 2 Timothy 2 too, right? Training up faithful men so they can go and teach other faithful men as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah, yes. that's good. And, you know, we all have a Paul in our life that we learned from, and then Paul had a Timothy that he was teaching, right? So, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Talk a little bit and, about that. Well, uh, my hero is a New Testament hero. Yeah. Uh, he is the only Gentile writer mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Luke. Luke. All right. That's right. <laughs> and uh, uh, when I studied in seminary, mm -hmm. I focused on Luke. Right. So uh, I studied uh, with Luke scholars. Right. Uh, mostly from the UK and in, in the, and the Netherlands. Nice. So yeah, at the end of the day, we're all being uh, built up to rightly divide the word of truth, and then they can go out and make disciples. That's multiplication. So that's what you're interested in. Exactly. You need to train people in the word. 
to be faithful to the word. And when they are faithful to the word and they proclaim the gospel faithfully, mm -hmm. as we know, the Apostle Paul teaches us by the Holy Spirit, right. uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit, right. we have his words. Yeah. And he says, faith comes by hearing. Right. And it's hearing the word, right. the word of God, not the word of man. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's a good word right there. Yes. Well, stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more about Murph, Middle East Reformed Fellowship, and how you too can help answer the call and be partners with a ministry that's sharing the gospel worldwide. Keep watching. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. We're excited to speak with Victor Atala, the founder of Murph Middle East Reformed Fellowship based in Cyprus. You know, we're talking about sharing the gospel. Jesus had preached the gospel to every living creature. So talk about your approach and sharing the good news. Well, our approach must be the Pauline approach, to be faithful to the word, but proclaim it relevantly. Right. And so... There are uh, uh, many approaches to reaching out to Muslims. Mm -hmm. Our uh, choice is to be positive. Mm -hmm. We do not get involved in polemics. We do not say what is wrong with other people's religion, mm -hmm. but we follow what we read in John. Mm -hmm. When he's lifted up, when mm -hmm. Christ is lifted up, he attracts all people to him. That's right. And so we realize that uh, Islam is a, is a world and life religion. Right. They have their view of every area of life. Right. So we must also take the holistic biblical approach in right. our evangelism, in right. our teaching, right. in our building of, of the church. And right. we are living in very special days yes. when many more Muslims than mm -hmm. ever before mm -hmm. are open to right. other ideas. Yeah. And therefore, we present to them the ultimate answer to all things. Right. And Muslims are attracted to the person of Jesus because right. he is the unique one. Right. He is not just a prophet, right. but he is the focus and the ultimate objective of all right. prophecy in the revelation of the Bible. From right. Genesis right. to Revelation, right. Jesus is the yeah. center of all scriptures. That's right. Uh, yeah, from the beginning, they call him Christophanes, where the Lord appeared from Genesis all the way through. And, uh, you know, God put skin on and, and, yeah, we don't have to over explain what he said. What he said is what he said. And, and it teaches. He's the best teacher. Mm -hmm. So, again, like John or the Gospel of Luke, when you share what Jesus did and what he said, it's, uh, you know, yeah. it's, and, it's and, perfect. <laughs> and and uh, it is very important to realize right. what the Bible from beginning to end right. is about. And we come to the Gospel of John in 1.18, right. right. and it tells us no one has ever encountered God. Right. Nobody has true knowledge of God. Right. The only one yeah. who is in the bosom of the Father, he made him known. Right. So God gradually revealed himself right. through the prophets right. until the time came when the work of the prophets came to its ultimate uh, form right. in the last and the seal of biblical prophets, right. John the baptizer. Right. Right. And this one, yeah. this one, Jesus called the greatest of all prophets. Right. Because he's the only one of all the prophets mm -hmm. who did not just say he's coming. That's how we recognize him. Right. But he said, that's him. Right. This is the, the, lamb, lamb, of God. the lamb of God who takes away yeah. not the sin of the Jews, right. but the sin of the world. Amen. That's good. Yes. That's our gospel. That's good news for everybody. It's all about Jesus. And like you said, the focus is on the word, on the scriptures. And... Uh, and the focus, revealing. when yeah. you focus on the scriptures, right. it's always Christ at the center. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. Well, stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more about evangelism, some of the board members, some of the staff, some of the volunteers, people who are involved with MERF, so you can see how they are reaching the world 
with the yes. good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Keep watching. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. We're excited to talk about discipleship with Victor Atala, uh, one of the founders of Murph, his wife Lisa, Middle East Reformed Fellowship. You know, it's all about a biblical discipleship, a, a true disciple. How would you define discipleship? Well, I'm glad you mentioned the word discipleship yeah. because a lot of times we Christians forget that Christ did not come to establish a religion. Right. He came to establish a new creation. He is the new Adam. Mm -hmm. And as the new Adam, in the womb of the Virgin Mary, he received a new soul. Yeah. A new Adam with a new soul, not connected to the soul of the first Adam, who gives us all corrupt, falling souls. Right. Mm -hmm. So the new Adam, mm -hmm. this new Adam, he builds a new creation. It's a life-giving Adam. Yeah. He's a life-giving Adam. <laughs> through the life-giving gospel. Right. He makes a new creation of all nations. Right. Without distinction of right. color, right. of race, of language, of mm -hmm. tribe. Right. And this one new creation must be shaped after him. Right. He is the teacher. Yeah, and we are, we are good. not just believers who yeah. believe the, uh, he's correct. Uh, we believe that he just came to the world. He was born at Chris, uh, on Christmas Day right. and he died and he rose. No, we are his body. Right. And as his body, his disciples, we must be shaped after him by the power of his word and his spirit. Right. And so teaching People who believe in the Lord Jesus right. means that we disciple them into him. Right. It's funny because uh, I wouldn't even say it's funny. I mean, what's most amazing is after the resurrection in Matthew 28, starting in 18, he says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. That's, That's a big right. statement. Absolutely. And then that next statement that we always go to, 19, says, so therefore... Since I, what I just said, go make disciples, teach them to obey all I've commanded you and, you know, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But teach them to obey. Obey what? Obey the scriptures. All, he said, yeah. all that I have commanded yeah. you. Yeah. And this is, you know, when Jesus said, I have authority over all things visible and invisible. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a theory. It's not a maybe. It's not a perhaps. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people do not recognize right. the fact right. that when Jesus says, I have authority, he does have authority. Right. It's not authority like people expect, political authority or right. material authority right. or military authority. Right. Because his kingdom, he said, yeah. is not of this world. Right. It's a different kind of authority. Right. So it might not appear, it <laughs> might not appear that he has control over things, right. but he does have control over yeah. things. Right. The hearts of kings yeah. are like streams of waters. He directs them whichever he, way he wants. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. So he moves the heart of presidents, of kings, yeah. of generals, of important people yeah. and not so important people. Right. He has all things in his hands yeah. to carry out his objective, which is to make a new creation of people yeah. from all nations. Yeah, all nations, tribes, tongues. Yeah, they're going to all be in, in heaven. Exactly. Worshiping the Lamb, you know, and God. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful picture. It's really good news. You know, Absolutely. And you know, sometimes people tend to argue or debate over this stuff, but you got to forget, I'm trying to give you some good news here. God loves you and He wants you in His kingdom. And that's where the Bible begins and yeah. where it ends. Yeah. In the Bible, we know about the call to Abraham. Right. Now, if, you, uh, if we look closely at God's call to Abraham in mm -hmm. chapter 12 of Genesis, right. it ends with this. The purpose of him, of God mm -hmm. calling Abraham and giving him a land and a nation mm -hmm. 
was to lead to a seed. And who is that seed? But the Lord Jesus. Right. And he says, in this seed, mm -hmm. I will bless all families of the earth. Yes. All nations, yeah. That's all good. families of the earth. Yeah, that's good. And that comes, of course, through the preaching of the gospel. Right. Yeah. And uh, in the gospel, it says that God used the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. So we've got to put words to it. We've got to talk about it, right? So Absolutely. You know, but, but when we say, when we, we must understand what is meant by foolishness. Yeah. It, the gospel itself is, not, is beautiful. It's right. not foolish. Right. It's in the minds of those who persecuted the church, who hate Christ. Right. They don't understand the ways of God right. because only those who have the Spirit of God right. understand right. To those the ways who are of being God. saved, it's the power of God, but the message of the cross can be foolishness to the unbelievers. They don't, they don't get it. So that's why you said re revealed. God reveals it to them. It either offends yeah. them yeah. to hate Him more, right. or it attracts them to love Him more. Right. And those who've been forgiven much love much, right? So Absolutely. when you realize how much of a sinner you are, you're like, wow, I've been forgiven a lot. Thank you. I love you so much. And, <laughs> and, and when we have that attitude, uh, yeah. Pastor Chuck, yeah. then we realize that we have no enemies right. as we present the gospel. Right. The, the real enemies are not people of right. other religions or other ideas right. because the spiritual warfare is not yeah. with right. man. Right. It is with the spiritual authorities, the spiritual powers hosts, yeah, right. that, that Jesus has already conquered. Exactly. Amen. So this is exciting. Tell our viewers a little bit about some of the projects, some of the programs, the way you guys do ministry. How do you, how do, you, how do, you do it? Well, Murph is specialized in using the media. Right. Uh, in the past, radio was very important, right. still somewhat important, but mm -hmm. not as important as before. Right. So we have staff mm -hmm. now doing media work, mostly and increasingly through the Internet. Right. We have online radio. We have different websites for... Uh, evangelism, for discipling, mm -hmm. for teaching uh, local national workers, mm -hmm. all the way from Indonesia to North Africa, all the way to Morocco. Nice. And we are very, sp we, are, we are blessed. We are living in very special days. Yeah, right. We have the when tools and technology to reach everywhere. Yeah. We have the tools and the technology, but also God has worked mm -hmm. in such a way that many more Muslims all the way from Indonesia to Morocco are looking for alternatives. Mm -hmm. uh, and when they are looking for alternatives, the wonderful alternative is the one who is king, mm -hmm. but king of peace, the yeah. self-giving right. king. Yes. There is no king like him. Right. There king is no kings, king. Lord of Lords, yeah. There is no king that is not self-seeking right. except Jesus, who is right. self-giving. Right. That's good. That's a, that's a big distinctive. Yeah. King of kings, Lord of lords, and the Prince of Peace. Yeah. You know, in the Bible, yeah. we have a different God mm -hmm. from all the other gods. All the other gods are claimed to be almighty, powerful, know everything, mm -hmm. can do everything. Mm -hmm. but in the Bible, the sovereign almighty God mm -hmm. is also holy. And he says, you cannot come near to me, mm -hmm. I come to you. That's right. And there is no God like him who is self-giving. Mm -hmm. Almighty has all power, has mm -hmm. all wisdom, yeah. but he uses all his power mm -hmm. and all his wisdom mm -hmm. in a holy way mm -hmm. to give himself. He humbled himself to be a servant. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. Servant leadership. That's, that's how to do it. <laughs> yes. And so, of course, Jesus yeah. is the ultimate leader who is self-giving as a servant. Yeah. And you talked about how Muslims are attracted to him. Talk about that. Well, you know, people are people. Mm -hmm. They have minds. They have hearts. They have eyes. They have ears. They are following the mm -hmm. news. They are told all kinds of ideas. Mm -hmm. And what's appealing most to Muslims today is who Jesus is, mm -hmm. his perfect life, mm -hmm. and his 
wonderfully beautiful mm. teaching. Mm -hmm. We often get uh, messages like this. I am mm -hmm. told to hate. I am mm -hmm. told to fight. Mm -hmm. And some would say, oh, I am even told to go kill. Mm -hmm. And then you get somebody from uh, even a place like Mecca or somewhere in, uh, in Iran or mm -hmm. Pakistan. Yeah. And then they write and they say, okay, I heard uh, on your website or on the radio about uh, Isa. Isa mm -hmm. is Jesus right. in, uh, in uh, Islamic right. Arabic. Right. Uh, I heard about Isa and he says, love your enemies. Uh, bless those who curse you. And what a difference it is. Right, that's night and day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's our Jesus. Exactly. Or Yeshua. <laughs> exactly. The name above all names. Keep watching. We're going to talk a little bit more about discipleship and how Murph, the Middle East Reform Fellowship, is making disciples from Cyprus all around the world. Keep watching. Thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answer the Call. We hope by now you're feeling a hunch from the Holy Spirit to get involved with a ministry like Murph, Middle East Reform Fellowship. They're based in Cyprus, but they've got locations all around the world. So talk about ways that the body of Christ can partner and get involved with a ministry like yours. We need to realize that uh, God doesn't change. The gospel doesn't change. And the gospel is not uh, conditioned by a Western or Eastern culture. Mm -hmm. The gospel is lively and is relevant to all cultures. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what is needed today is to realize that missions has changed. Right. Yes, pioneer missionaries, faithful as they were, they had a wonderful vision mm -hmm. to always make their way out to nationals mm -hmm. who will take over. They realize right. that sooner or later, it's the national church the locals need to that must be church. trained to right. be faithful to the gospel, and the Lord will bless that. Right. And that's exactly what happened. So Murph builds on the work of faithful pioneer missionaries from Morocco all the way to Indonesia. And so we have training centers, mm -hmm. we have uh, radio recording centers, mm -hmm. we have media production centers, mm -hmm. and it's wonderful to have these people, right. especially now I get very excited when I look at teams in Indonesia, yeah. in Lebanon, in Sudan, right. in Egypt, uh, in other places right. who are young people. Right. They are very good at using the internet right. and they are using it for the sake of proclaiming the gospel. That's good. And so they, we, we have the, this, uh, these training centers right. to train the local people. Right. And this is how God is blessing the work of Murph in yeah. these different fields. We have six languages in Indonesia, including yeah. the national one, Bahasa Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Then you have Javanese, this is the largest group of Indonesians. Mm -hmm. The Sundanese, also on the big island of Java. Then we have three other languages on the right. island of Sulawesi. Bugis, Makassaris, and Toraja. Wow. That's and great. then in East Africa, we have four languages. Yeah. We have Nuer, which is a, a major language for South Sudan. Right. Then you have Amhara. Amharic, the Amharic language of Ethiopia. Yeah. And the largest people group in Ethiopia are the Oromo. Mm -hmm. So we have the Oromo language and also Somali, which is, covers both Ethiopia, Ethiopia mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of the Horn of Africa. Right. But we have to remember through the internet, right, right. a lot of Indonesians and right. uh, East Africans and North Africans and Arabs uh, are on the internet. Right. So we are able to reach them if they are in North America, in Europe, right. in Australia, all over the world. That's awesome. That is just amazing. 
Like you said, these are special days. And you mentioned it earlier, nothing's changed. In Romans 10, faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. Absolutely. That's it. That's yes. great. That's exciting. So it obviously costs money and resources to get things translated, whether it's materials, training materials, or even producing these you know, broadcasts and, and audio tracks. Uh, and running internet uh, websites, there's, there's costs involved in doing that. So do people earmark dollars for specific, or is it general fund giving? How do they give to you guys? Well, people are uh, touched uh, as the Lord leads them. Right. We, do not, uh, uh, we, do not to, we do not try to yeah. tell people support this or support that. Right. The Lord's and, in charge of all and, that. That's and the good. Lord, the Lord uh, graciously guides the leadership. Right. We have a, a wonderful international board yeah. registered as trustees yeah. in Europe right. uh, based on the Republic of Cyprus. Okay. And then we have what we call an international council. Right. And these are representatives of support committees in the U.S., in Canada, in the U.K., in Great. the Netherlands, Australia, New Zealand, and other places. Right. Yeah. And it is wonderful to see as they get together, yeah. they pray together with the field mm -hmm. representatives and mm -hmm. the staff. Right. Uh, and as they pray together and they hear each other out, right. then they make a, a budget that yeah. covers and, uh, all yeah. fields. And discern the needs, whatever the needs may be. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. MRF is not an elaborate, right. flashy organization. Right, right. Most of the people who are involved in promotion and raising support are volunteers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's good. Keep the cost down, and and uh, that's that's the way. It should, that's the body of Christ, right? Everybody brings their gifts and talents, and they say, "Lord, what can I do? Here I am. Send me." And He brings people. And that's why we say right. these points right. uh, about the ministries of MRF: mm -hmm. faithful. Mm -hmm. Faithful to the Word of God, yeah. to the true gospel, fruitful, yeah. and that's the work of God, not the work of man. Right. God is blessing it. We are seeing a lot of blessing all the way through these fields. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in the providence of God, we are there at the right time with the right method, mm -hmm. and the Lord is blessing. So faithful, fruitful, and cost-effective. Yeah, and good. the reason... It is so cost effective. It's because you are doing things locally right. at, the, right. lo at the level of the local people. Right. That's good. That's good. That sounds like a formula for success and effective ministry to me. And the Lord is blessing that. Amen. Yes. Is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us and our viewers? Yes. I would like to remind God's people that we are living in special days. Mm -hmm. These are days... I grew up among Muslims. I went to school with Muslims. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends are still Muslims. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are good people. Mm -hmm. They are not violent people. Uh, like some people imagine. There are mm -hmm. those who are violent, who right. are extremist. Right. But a lot of Muslims are open to the gospel. That's good. Because of three factors. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. Me, man, means knowledge means that Muslim people today are not going to be uh, are going to, not going to accept to be told the Imam or the Sheikh or the, this or that will think for you. Mm -hmm. They're thinking for themselves, and yeah. as they're thinking, right. they are analyzing and they're looking for alternatives. Right. And then, after knowledge, they are now free to think. Right. We are living in days. For the first time, people are saying, I want to decide for myself. Yeah, freedom. Yeah. They are not afraid. And the more there is freedom in Arab and Muslim lands, the more you're going to see believers springing mm -hmm. out. Yeah. But we have to be careful. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful. We must separate ourselves from politics. Right. Because the politics mm -hmm. of the Lord Jesus is about self-giving, right. not about dominating other people. Right. And then we have to realize we are living in a world that is changing. It mm -hmm. is modernizing. Mm -hmm. We are not afraid of modernity, yeah. Yeah. but modernity and religion, mm -hmm. modernity and religion yeah. cannot coexist, right. especially if the religion is 
from the Middle Ages. Right. That's right. And God's interested in a relationship, not a religion. So it's all exactly. about relationship, communication. God right. is interested yeah. in, uh, in people yeah. who are made new right. on the basis of the work of the Lord Jesus right. by the power of the Word and the Spirit. Yeah, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, also Jeremiah 33, 3 is one of our favorite verses. God through Jeremiah said, if you call to me, I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things you don't know. So exactly. that's, that's revelation and, you know, show me, I need to know. And, you know? and, and as the word of God, as the gospel is proclaimed, yeah. it is pointing to the beauty uh -huh. and the perfection and the self-giving love of the Lord Jesus. Right. And the Holy Spirit germinates that right. in the hearts of, right. my, of men, in the hearts of men, right. women and children. Amen. And it generates, that generates faith. Yeah. And the more it generates faith, the more we see people following the Lord Jesus. Yeah, moved into action. That's good. Well, stay tuned. We're going to get some other interviews talking about ways you too can get involved in supporting ministry like Middle East Reform Fellowship, Murph in action. Keep watching. <laughs> Well, thanks again for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. And Victor, thank you so much for allowing us to come capture your story while you're here in the States. You're doing a great work around the country and you have a great team. It's a pleasure to have fellowship with you. Yeah. Well, we're friends now and we're partners in the gospel, so I'm excited to see what God will do. But I love an opportunity to pray with our viewers and ask God to establish some partnerships. Amen. Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are awesome. We thank you for raising up Victor and his wife, Lisa to start and launch Murph Middle East Reform Fellowship. And we thank you for the councils and the board members and the many volunteers and the nationals who have stepped up and stepped out to do the work of ministry. We ask you to continue to bless them and move in the hearts of our viewers to partner uh, with their time, with their treasure, with their talents. You are God of all. Lead us and guide us and show us how we can reap a harvest in these last days. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, until our next episode of Answering the Call, may you and your families be blessed. Hi, I'm Pastor Chuck Reesh. I'm the executive producer at Horizon Media Studios. It's a 501c3 media ministry, and what we're doing is helping other ministries tell their story. Homeless shelters and children's homes, Bible colleges, seminaries, mission sending agencies. With your help, we can continue to help tell their story to inspire the world, to shine their light, and let God get the glory for the work that's being done in advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Thanks again for praying for us.